Hello, ancient world people, and welcome back to Peace of the Week. Today we're going to be talking about Egyptian mummy coffins, not to be confused with sarcophagus or sarcophagi, which are the outer shell, the receptacle for the coffin itself. The sarcophagi translates to flesh eater or stone eater. So it, what, it's what's put inside it. So, and why are we talking about coffins this week? How morbid? Well, the most fantastic discovery in absolutely ages has been announced in Egypt last Saturday, actually. And it was the discovery of 28 likely priests, priest coffins in a place called El Asasif in Western Luxor, ancient Thebes, Waset, and two children coffins were amongst them. Now, they were layered like a lasagna of coffins, intersecting. No tomb, just absolutely stacked stacked to the max and well preserved no termite invasion or anything it's just all the colors are quite preserved well preserved they uh, used a mixture of uh, beeswax and egg yolk to paint over the coffin design once it was completed and that helped preserve the images that we got to see today so, why? Why, why, why do I love? What I've heard, they haven't actually given a date to the coffins, but you can safely put them in the third intermediate period towards the end of the Ramesside era, with the death of Ramses XI, I think. It's when coffins started to change. People couldn't afford to pay for tombs to be cut and excavations were brought to a, a halt for all but the highest of society. The, the king, the, the highest of high priests, everybody else, they started to reuse old tombs. And they even started to reuse old coffin wood because the Cedars of Lebanon had stopped coming. The wonderful, legendary timber that was used for great furniture and coffins as well. And the, the supply chain had, had stopped. Political instability, economic decline, all influencing this period in Egypt. But that didn't mean that the quality of the artwork necessarily stopped in fizzled out. On the contrary, the coffins that were made are exceptional. And these ones are no different that were found. They're a very good example of the yellow background kind of coffin that was in use at the time. Covered in vignettes of images from the Book of the Dead. Texts, sacred texts that would have been put on the walls of the tombs, well, the best of them and the most important ones were put on the coffins themselves now. So the coffins became the most important burial equipment and the, the mask, of course, as well. Everything that was contained within the coffin was exemplary. I mentioned in a previous video that the Leiden Museum in the Netherlands has an exceptional collection of similar coffins, so it's, they're easily datable. And these ones fit very much in the canon of design. You can tell by the hands which ones were female 
than which were male. Pay attention to the hands on the coffins, the slender fingers denote a high priestess or a, an enchantress of Amun, a temple singer of a high order. And the fist hands were of the male priests. The reason this is such a good find is because I've read about how it was in the early years of archaeology. One of the most annoying aspects of Egyptology is the discovery of what happened prior to the formation of the discipline that is Egyptology. The adventure years, the adventurer years where raiders would go into Egypt and just trash things, take to take whatever they could, the easy pickings. Tombs that were open, stuffed with mummy cases. Just not even, no respect. They were using them as fuel for trains. Steam trains were new and they just thought, well, Let's use these mummies. They're there everywhere. So they're burning them. Bandages, coffins and all. Of course they sift through for any precious items. But absolutely galling. Disgraceful. Makes me sick. It's made me angry for a long time when I read that. Yes, hello. It's Boring Beryl here and it's time to stop the train and unhook the caboose of myth and misinformation. This outrageous story has its origins in a passage of prose written by none other than Mark Twain. When the railroad was being built in Egypt, a lot of burials were indeed disturbed, but what he said was in jest. I'll read it for you. I shall not speak of the railway in Cairo, for it is like any other railway. I shall only say that the fuel they use for the locomotive is composed of mummies 3,000 years old, purchased by the ton, or by the graveyard for that purpose and that sometimes one hears the profane engineer call out pettishly, Damn these plebeians! They don't burn worth a cent! Pass me out a king! Mark Twain. Oh boy, I must say I'm quite partial to that man. If he was still alive, or somebody bothered to mummify him, he could leave his boots under my bed any day. So the fact of the matter is as follows. Mark was just having a joke. So get over it. All right? That's another Beryl Whittaker fact check for 2019. However... When it comes to ground up mummies, well, sound the alarm. It's true. I mean, they used to ground the mummies up as well. They were like the snake oil salesmen used to have ground up mummy paste that they would offer to unsuspecting gullible people to ward off ailments of the time. I think I'll have to find a and all that. I know I've got them in my library, but I don't think I've got them here. Oh, it's gross. to think that that's how it was. Can you imagine how much has been lost? And what was found on the weekend is one glimpse of how it used to be. 
this great collection of coffins. Just, yeah, to the, to the untrained eye, they kind of all look the same, but they're all unique and different. They've got their own special qualities. And I can't wait to see them. They're being moved to the new Egyptian museum, the Gem, the Grand Egyptian Museum on the Giza Plateau or just off the Giza Plateau. It's going to be wonderful. They'll have their own display, which is very special. It's a modern day little romance for us to see. Well, the romance of discovery, which is hasn't presented something like this for a long time. The mummy cache was found in a place called El Asasif, which is not far from the well-known Deir el Bahari, which is Hatshepsut's temple, that glorious place where we've wandered. Who knows? I probably walked over it and didn't even know because I had quite a good look around there. Right next to it is the Temple of Thutmose the Third as well. It's, I thought it was well and truly excavated and fished out of all wonders. The Metropolitan Museum has a tremendous example of Hatshepsut's, sculpt, Hatshepsut's sculpture, Queen Hatshepsut. Hatshepsut, whatever you want to, whatever you want to call her, Hatshep. Sut. Yeah. Over the years, I've made many different kinds of coffins for my dead animals, for budgies, for goldfish, for cats, not possums. There's one outside, I can hear it climbing up a palm tree. Maybe it wants me to make them one. I'm not interested. I'm not going to do it. Live. Live Pachula. Show us your coffins. Anyway. Show us your coffins. Show us your coffins. I'll show you some of those now. One was featured heavily in the What's in the Box competition a few months ago. That was for the goldfish Senusret. And there were various other ones that I made. And not all of them were for kings. Some of them were for noble, noble fish or noble budgies. <laughs> they were what I was into doing in the 80s. And I've got an example of one from the turn of the century. Well, it was around 1999 after I did the Queensland Museum gig, which was in conjunction with the Leiden Museum. And they had a coffin. The main feature coffin of that exhibition was of a very similar style to the one that was the ones that were found on the weekend. Who knows that the coffin that was featured in that exhibition and the person that, lit, that was buried within it 
may very well have known these people that they found. It's, it's amazing. But yes, I made a coffin while I was there at the museum. And that's this one here. I'll show you now in the tomb room. I'm making this available again. I've actually started it today. I haven't made it available for years, about five years, I think. You now I offer it with a wrapped pseudo body inside, a mummy mask, a little stele and a, an assortment of amulets. And the mummy is nicely wrapped too. And I seal it with a little bit of wax join and wax, wax joins inside the wrappings. So, and it smells good too. It's for the person that has everything. Yeah. So I wrote a song this week, or, or the start of one, because I was so thrilled to the tits about this discovery. And, and do you want to hear it? It's just a little bit mm, of it. Do we really have a choice in the matter? It's in my higher voice, so if you need cotton wool balls to soften the blow, pop them in now. And, um... I'll share it with you. It's just the emotion of it. Over 3,000 years ago I was buried in a tomb with you Only you Now Disgust, well, things have changed. It was very respectful, and I just hope that 
more discoveries are treated in this manner because in the last few years the looting that's gone on in Egypt has been pretty bad. The satellite images show massive holes everywhere in Saqqara, like rabbit burrows, just random clandestine efforts to try and find something and inevitably they are. Like the amazing coffin that was discovered in this period, this looting period, made its way to the Metropolitan Museum where it was purchased to add to the collection, only to find that the paperwork was false and it was a looted antiquity. And it is a magnificent coffin of the type. It's all gilded from head to foot. Late period style but a good example of it. It's a masterpiece of the style, whether you like it or not, facially or artistically. It's still Egyptian. Greco-Roman, perhaps, but it's still, it's still marvellous. No, it's Ptolemaic. It's Ptolemaic period. And, uh, yeah, I think it's wonderful. It's been returned and... It'll have its own exhibition hall too, perhaps, as, a, as an example of what not to do. Don't be stealing from Egypt. Let's have a look at that coffin now. It's marvellous. So that's this week's piece of the week. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see some more, then hit the notification bell. And I will send you a notification of when the next video arrives. So I'll see you next time for another edition of Piece of the Week. Bye for now.